Hello learners, I am Dr. Vishal Sood, Teacher Educators. In the previous unit, we have studied about elementary education and universal elementary education. Universal elementary education can be seen in four aspects that you know very well. The first one is universal assess, second is universal enrollment, third is universal retention and the fourth one is universal achievement. Uh, in the next unit, you have already, uh, all, uh, also studied about that uh, the organizational structure of elementary education at national and state level. You know very well that uh, at national level, NCRT is the main agency which is responsible for planning and implementing and monitoring different activities related to elementary education in the whole nation. At the state level, there are two different agencies depending on the state uh, administrative structure that one, uh, the, the one agency is State Council of Educational Research and Training that is SCERT and the second is CIMAT, S-I-E-M-A-T, State Institute of Educational Management and Training. In this unit, we are going to study about the organizational structure of elementary education at district level, at block level, at cluster level. So the main points of this discussion that we are going to discuss today is the glimpse of organizational structure of elementary education at different levels that you have studied uh, in the previous unit. The second part that we are going to deal with the structure or the branches of the DIT that is District Institute of Education and Training. The third is role and functions of DIT Fourth point that we are going to discuss today is block resource centers. What block resource centers are, how they are organized, what are their assigned roles and responsibilities. Then the next point of discussion will remain that is cluster resource center CRC. What are its assigned roles and functions. So now we will uh, start with the glimpse of organizational structure that you have studied in the previous unit. As you know at the national level, the NCERT is the main agency which is responsible for planning, monitoring, supervising and evaluating different activities related to elementary education. Similarly, at the state level, SCERT and CMET. These are the two major agencies which are responsible for Mon planning and monitoring different activities. Now, in this unit, the main focus will remain on the agencies which are operational at district level, that is the DIT, then at the block level, and then at the cluster level. So, we will first start with District Institute of Education and Training. As you know that this at the district level, this is the major agency which is responsible for planning, implementing, monitoring, pedagogical activities in the district which are related to elementary education. These diets, are, uh, uh, these diets have been established on the recommendations of National Policy on Education 1986. Now these agencies which are the major nodal agencies at uh, district level, these agencies have seven branches. These are the seven academic branches of DIET. As you can uh, see on the screen that the one branch is planning and management branch, the other is pre-service teacher education branch, the third is educational technology branch, the fourth branch academic branch of DIET is in-service education branch which also includes the field interaction of the elementary teachers uh, and the innovation. The fourth branch is that is curriculum, material development and evaluation branch. Then the sixth branch is work experience branch and one of the most important branch of DIET is DRU that is district resource unit. Now as far as these the functions of these branches are considered uh, the first pre-service teacher education branch it is 
uh, this is the branch which deals with providing training to the uh, uh, prospective teachers and uh, uh, courses like DLED or GBT or DED are being run in diets to impart training to the teachers. Educational technology branch, it deals with the technical aspects of education. The third branch which deal, that deals with in-service teacher education uh, branch and it provides training to the teachers. It organizes seminars, conferences, it uh, organizes workshops for the teachers and these seminars or these workshops are organized on different topics. They are also involved in field interactions. So this branch is the major functional branch of the diet. Then, Curriculum material development, this function of diet is most important as the diets, they take feedback, they receive feedback from the field, from the schools, from the teachers and accordingly that feedback is incorporated while developing the curriculum, while developing the material and the, this branch is also involved in assessment of different schemes run at the district level which are planned or monitored at the uh, state level. Then the work experience branch and most important branch which we have already said that is the district resource unit. This district resource unit not only deals with uh, providing academical, academic and technical support to the teachers in the schools but is also involved in providing training to uh, the adult education workers, the literacy workers and those involved in non-formal education uh, activities uh, at the district level. This district resource unit is also involved in providing training and academic support to the village level education committees or which has been uh, recently entitled as school management committees under Right to Education Act 2009. So these are the seven academic branches of DIET which are uh, involved in uh, organizing different activities at the district level. Now, what are the roles of diets? As you can see on the screen that the major role of diet is to identify the problematic areas at the district or at the sub-district level. Now, these problematic areas may be related to the elementary education or it's any aspect. These aspects may be like teaching learning process, like action researches, like TLM, its use or like uh, non-formal education or how to involve community in different activities of the school, how to activate SMCs or how to uh, involve the uh, SMC members or ensure their maximum participation in school activities. So these may be the problems that are related to the elementary education and this is the role of assigned role of the diet that to identify these problematic areas which are acting as a bottleneck at the district level and uh, due to those problems we are not able to achieve the long cherished goal of universal elementary education or the cent percent literacy. So this is the first role of diet. The second role of diet as you can see on the screen that the second role of diet is to share the research findings and prepare district plans. The one of the most important role of diet is to conduct research activities to design research activities. Now when uh, these diets are involved in designing and conducting different research activities, these, the findings of these research activities are shared by the diets and the inputs received from the findings on the basis of these uh, research studies, the district plans, district level plans are prepared which are further forwarded to the state level to have state level annual plan. So the, uh, if we have a close look at these functions, these, the function of diet uh, or the role of diet to design and conduct minor research studies or to conduct the research studies, major research studies which are uh, given by the state level or the national level agencies to the diet for its conduct, those the findings of those research studies are shared by the diet at different levels. They are sent to the state level, they are sent to the national level and these research findings find diff, uh, a proper place in uh, while formulating district level plans, district level annual plans for uh, improvement of elementary education in the district. 
The other major role of diet, as you can see on the screen, that is to train teachers and provide them resource support. The diets are involved in providing uh, training to the teachers at elementary level and this training is mostly of two types. One is general teacher training, the second is specific teacher training. When we talk of general teacher training, this general teacher training is related to like RTE Act, environmental awareness, the uh, role of SMCs in uh, improving elementary education, then human values development among children. These are the general topics on which different uh, teachers at uh, elementary level are trained. Then another sort of uh, training is specific teacher training at elementary level which is provided by the diets. Specific teacher training is related to the subjects. It is related to the pedagogy of the subjects in which teachers are trained. How to improve their teaching practices or how to improve their teaching methodology is the major concern of these training programs. And these training programs are related to pedagogy just like pedagogy of social sciences, pedagogy of mathematics, pedagogy of so, uh, sciences, so pedagogy of languages. And uh, while these training programs are organized for teachers, they are provided different type of resources resources. These resources may be in the form of training modules. These resource, uh, resources may be in the form of pamphlets or brochures which are given to the teachers to have more understanding about such, uh, uh, such aspects. Then th another role of diet is to monitor action research activities at the district level. The teachers are trained to conduct action research studies and to improve their practices at the school level. Now, how those elementary school teachers are involved in conducting action researches, how whether they are conducting action researches in a proper manner or not, how those uh, action research findings are put to use for further improvement of their teaching styles is also one of the major role of the diet and the diet faculty members or the teacher educators are engaged in these activities to give impetus to the uh, universal elementary education at the district level. Now we will discuss about the functions of diet. These functions of diets as you can see on the screen. The first function is that is training and orientation. This training and orientation is not only for the teachers but also for the edu uh, adult education work workers, the SMC members, the members of the NGOs, the members of the self-help groups. All these organizations which are working for the cause of universal elementary education, they are also imparted training and orientation by the diet at the district level so that they can contribute in the field, so that they can contribute uh, in the field for the improvement of elementary education or the awareness among the general masses uh, about education. The second function of diet that is action research and experimentation. Action research and experimentation, the training is provided to the teachers to conduct action researches and to experiment new ideas so that the quality of elementary education can be improved to the maximum level. So this is one of the major function of diet. And the third function as we have already discussed that is academic and resource support to elementary and adult education. So diets are also involved in providing academic support in the form of training, in the form of the literature, research literature or the academic literature, material support or the um, this uh, human support to the elementary education and the adult education sector for improving the scenario of elementary education as well as elementary education at the district level. Now, at the block level, the major agency responsible for uh, Im improving the quality of elementary education is block resource center. Now, as far as uh, Till, uh, uh, till time we have discussed about the role and functions of diets. Now diets have a broader area to cover to, uh, for, uh, uh, for making many interventions. So in order to support the diets, 
we have block resource centers at the block level to provide help and to provide support to the diets and these agencies which are responsible for providing academic and technical support to the teachers, to the diets, to the schools, these are known as block resource centers. These block resource centers or shortly titled as BRCs are, have been established with the aim of providing academic support and educational guidance to teachers and schools and to implement quality improvement interventions at the school level. These BRCs comprise a group of certain number of villages. But one thing we should remember that it is not true in, all, in case of all the states that how many villages will constitute a BRC. It depends on the demography, on the population of the particular state, whether how many uh, villages will be covered under a particular block. So BRCs comprise a group of certain number of villages depending on the nature or the population or the demography of the uh, particular state. Now, the activities of a BRC is coordinated by a block education officer or in some states it is also known as block elementary education officer BEEO who is uh, with technical support who is provided technical support with other personnel like data entry operators, junior engineers, block resource coordinators, resource teachers and other personnel. So block, res block resource coordinator is the main personnel who is involved in carrying out different activities at the block level to improve the quality of elementary education and he is responsible to block elementary education officer who is further responsible to the diet authorities. BRC seeks to be a resource center for giving all kinds of on-site academic support to the elementary school teachers. It is the major agency at the block level which provides academic support as well as technical support uh, to the teachers, to the schools to improve its practices, to improve the functioning of the schools and finally to improve the quality of elementary education. Now the roles of BRC as you can see on the screen, the major role of the BRC, the block resource center can be classified into five major components. The first and the foremost part of uh, role of BRC is the training to the teachers. The BRCs are involved in providing training to the teachers at the BRC level. In reality, the diets are involved in providing training to the master trainers who are the block level uh, resource group and they are further responsible for providing training to the teachers at the school level. So this is a cascade model which is adopted under Sarv Shiksha Abhyan which is adopted by Sarv Shiksha Abhyan to provide training to teachers. The state level authorities they provide training to the teachers at the diet level. The diets are involved in providing training to the master trainers and the master trainers which form a BRG that is known as block resource group they provide training to the teachers at the school level or at the block level. The, this is the first and foremost function of BRC that is to provide training to the teachers. The second most important role of BRC is to conduct research action research activities to provide support to the teachers to conduct action research activities. BRCs are also involved in uh, community mobilization and organizing different type of functions, organizing different type of school activities for students. Different type of functions, different type of programs on special occasions like Independence Day, on Republic Day, these all functions are uh, organized under the overall guidance of block resource uh, coordinators. The third important function is material development. Now the material development, this material development deals with the material which is related to pedagogical practices of the teachers. Different type of teaching learning material are developed by the, uh, by the 
block resource group at the BRC level and these, these materials are then distributed to the teachers at the, uh, at the school level so that they can improve their practices. So material development is also one of the important function of the block resource centers. Another important function of that is planning, executing and monitoring SSA activities. Now when we talk of SSA activities, there are different activities or different interventions which are organized under the rubric of SSA. Now how to plan those activities, how to execute those activities, how and when to monitor those activities, these all activities at the block level are undertaken by the block resource centers. So the main function of BRCs as we can uh, summarize is that is to plan, execute and monitor SSA activities, training to the teachers, action research activities, community mobilization and activities for the students and material development. Now the functions of BRC, we can uh, see on the screen that the major functions of the BRC are to provide equipments and essential teaching learning materials to the elementary schools. BRCs are responsible for providing different type of equipments. These equipments can be technological equipments or these uh, equipments can be the teaching learning material or the improvised apparatuses. To provide these equipments or the TLM is the major function of the block resource centers. The second function of BRC is to carry out and monitor construction and repair of the school buildings. The construction of the school buildings at elementary level are, uh, is done under the overall guidance of the BRCs. The repair of school buildings is undertaken under the guidance of the BRCs. Then the third function of BRCs is to carry out the supervision of schools and to enforce compulsory attendance of students and teachers. It is being witnessed that the uh, attendance of the students as well as the attendance of the teachers is not up to the mark. There has been a decline or there has been the instances of teachers absenteeism in the schools. So to have a check on the teachers presence in the school, a regular presence in the school, this function is undertaken by the block resource centers, block resource coordinators or the block elementary education officers. They carry out the activities of uh, uh, schools at different um, uh, times, supervise those activities, provide them with feedback so that they can improve in future and organize the activities accordingly. The fourth function of the BRC is to arrange for students dress that is the uniform and midday meal to the children. It is the responsibility, it is the function of the BRC that the students uniform should be given to them at appropriate time and there should be no problem in distribution of midday meal to the children at the elementary level. There is all functions are undertaken by BRCs and BRCs are involved not only in arranging for this, they also supervise the quality of midday meals at different occasions and guide the school authorities for bringing improvements in the same. Then another function of the BRC is to organize awareness campaigns and block level functions. The BRCs also organize awareness campaigns on different issues like population explosion, environmental awareness, on right to education, on uh, girls education. So different issues are there in the society for which awareness is much required in the current scenario. We are currently witnessing that environmental degradation is uh, in a huge state and second major important issue which is related to uh, girls education that the girls enrollment is not up to the mark and is relatively less as compared to the enrollment of the boys especially at elementary level. So to eradicate these problems, to remove these problems, the BRCs are also involved in organizing 
different awareness campaigns and block level functions are organized to generate awareness among the local people, among the masses so that they can contribute for the environmental conservation and they can send their girl child to the school so that the girls literacy or the female literacy can be improved uh, in our nation. Now, the other functions of uh, block level resource center is to secure the coordination and cooperation of other agencies like NGOs, self-help groups and government departments. It is witnessed that different NGOs, non-government organizations, self-help groups, Mahila Mandals and different government departments, they are uh, working for the cause of universal elementary education, for the cause of improving literacy in uh, the different states. So, how to secure their cooperation? how to bring them on a common platform, how to uh, uh, improve coordination between these agencies so that they can contribute in a combined manner for the cause of universal elementary education. This function is also being undertaken by the block resource centers. Now, other important function that you can see on the screen that is to conduct periodical review meetings with other officials of the block to remove any bottleneck in the execution of the various program inputs. Different interventions which have been uh, undertaken under the uh, Sarb Shiksha Abhiyan, the VRCs are involved in conducting the review meetings regarding those programs. And on the basis of those review meetings, the bottlenecks or the problems are identified in the execution of those programs, in the execution of those intervention strategies. And those bottlenecks when identified uh, on the basis of these review meetings, the different uh, solutions or the different uh, measures are uh, recommended to uh, remove those bottlenecks. Then another function of block level resource centers is to supervise the training programs at the block level and assess the impact of the training. To what level or to what extent the training programs have been successful in achieving their pre-conceptualized objectives and to what extent those objectives of training program have been achieved and the curriculum transaction at the classroom level has been improved. This function is also undertaken by the BRCs and BRCs are involved in supervising those training programs and assessing their impact. Now, if we wish to summarize the functions of the BRC, you can see on the screen that BRCs are involved in organizing the community awareness programs, BRCs are involved in the material development program and the BRCs are involved in providing training to the teachers at the block level with the help of BRG through master trainers. Now, another organization which is functioning at the cluster level for improving the quality of elementary education and achieving the target of universal elementary education is cluster resource center that is CRC. Cluster is a group of 8 to 10 schools in which different institutions can reinforce each other by exchanging resources, personals, materials, teaching aids, etc. and using them on a sharing basis. So, we can say that cluster is a more narrower platform or more closed platform for the teachers where they can share their experiences where the schools, lesser number of schools are on a common platform where they can share their resources for the betterment of each other, for the betterment of the students and for the betterment of whole educational system. Through CRCs, teachers come together to change ideas and experiences with other teachers and they work on their own professional development. Learners, as you know that if we uh, want to learn more and more, the peer group learning or the learning through experiences is very beneficial as compared uh, to listening the lectures or others. So, CRC is a common platform 
where the teachers they come together they share their experiences they work on their own professional development they try to learn from the other teachers how they teach in their classes how they organize different activities in their schools so the, uh, the crcs are more uh, uh, beneficial for the teachers professional development and this is these crcs they function under the overall supervision of the block level agencies or the block level organizations those are brcs that is block resource centers that we have earlier discussed crc is required to do the same activity at the cluster level as brc at the block level cluster resource center is uh, responsible for organizing for supervising for monitoring the same activities at the cluster level at the lower level or at a narrower level as brc organize these activity or monitor these activities at the block level the crcs are accountable to the headmasters of the said school the crcs uh, have been declared as panchayat education officers the headmasters of the cluster resource center are known as the panchayat education officers for rural areas and cluster resource officers for urban areas these are the role of crcs as you can see on the screen arranging teachers workshops supervisions of school prepare guidelines for school functioning manage and distribute school finances and arranging for uh, executing new curriculum now we'll discuss about functions of crc crc's major functions are inspection and supervision of schools in the complex they are involved in conducting inspection and supervision at the cluster level they are also involved in transfer of teachers within the complex but this is true only in case of some states then the crcs are also involved in distribution of furniture equipment and stationery the collection of information for further transmission to brcs and district and state functionaries is also a function which is undertaken by the crc and they collect information from the school level and send it to the higher authorities they are also involved in developing curricular material for teachers and arranging regular meetings for the teachers they are also involved in providing better access to teaching and learning resources to the teachers and planning for in service training programs for teachers especially classroom based and follow up training is given at the cluster level this is one of the major function that the field based training or the classroom based training or the follow up training after the initial training is given at the cluster level to the teachers so that they can improve upon their weaknesses that can remove their difficulties in teaching which they have learnt during the initial training program the follow up training is given at the cluster level to the teachers so this is all about that we have today discussed about all about the organizational structure of education elementary education at different levels we have discussed about the organizational structure of elementary education at dite level at the block level that is the brc level and at the cluster level we have discussed about the roles and the functions of these three agencies which are working at different levels that is at the district at the block and at the cluster level and or uh, and uh, and doing different functions to improve the quality of elementary education and to achieve the long cherished goal of universal elementary education in our nation thank you